Hello and welcome to this week's tutorial. Um, this week we're going to look at making a feather um, and just using the tools within Blender to completely create a feather that um, it's just a texture on a plane. Um, but yeah, I'll show you how to create the texture in the first place, which is quite cool. Um, I'll just quickly mention what I've been up to because it's been a few months since my last video. Um, basically, the video tutorials that I was doing and the website set up and everything it was all going well. Um, it was just a project to do whilst I was unemployed. Um, but, you know, no longer being unemployed, got a lot less time on my hands to do everything. Um, but, you know, I've been wanting to make more videos and sort of keep it going because it's the sort of field that I want to make my career in. Um, not necessarily doing tutorials and stuff. Although teaching would be a cool career. Um, but yeah, at least sort of doing some 3D work, uh, animation, modeling, pretty much anything I'm happy to do. Um, but yeah, so working in a supermarket at the back, working with stock, isn't my idea of fun. But, you know, it's quite a drain. Um, yeah, so I was in uh, February doing a card for my girlfriend um, making a heart with you know angel wing type things around this side I was trying to figure out sort of a good way to make um, the feathers for the wings and I wasn't having a lot of luck so I sort of started googling around came up with a Blender Nation forum post um, and there was, I think it was a post by Modron. Um, I haven't got it up anymore because it was a while ago. Um, yeah, he said a couple of sentences on the technique that he used, um, just using hair particles to render a texture out. Um, and I sort of looked at it and thought, you know, that's actually a good idea. So I tried it out, figured it out, and figured I'd pass on the knowledge. Because, you know, that's an important thing to do. So, um, what I will do first is turn on the Screencast Keys. Woo, yeah, I can hear you all cheering from here. Um, I had loads of people asking for me to use Screencast Keys because it shows you all my key presses and stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't actually show them all. Um, I've been doing a few tests just to make sure everything works. Um, and if I'm holding down two keys and doing something sometimes, from the middle of a mouse click and hold down two, key, two keys, there you go. It doesn't always show you what I've, exactly what I've been doing. Um, so yeah, we've got that on. Um, but I'll make sure I mention anything that doesn't come up there, because I'll keep an eye on it. And we'll start off by in edit mode. Just adding a subdivision, so there's a few more uh, vertices there. And go S, and then Shift Z. So you see that Shift Z didn't come up for some reason. Don't know why. Shift A was coming up all the time just now. But weird. Um, and then I'll just S and Z. So we've got a nice sort of long thin thing. Um, you could use pretty much any long thin shape. Um, you could use a cylinder, but it's kind of um, too many sides because you just want two sides to the feather. Um, so yeah, got that. And we'll go over here to add in some particle system, change it to hair, and just bring down the hair length. So that's the hair length um, setting there. Bring it down to so about that sort of length. Just sort of that sort of length. Um, and we'll go into particle mode. Um, and what we want to do is shape the hair to make it sort of look like a feather. Um, obviously it's gone a bit wonky there um, and it's this setting here that's making that happen. So we'll just turn it off. So it just hasn't fixed it yet. Go back to object mode and just nudge this setting. That's just the seed. Um, it can be any value you like. Um, but I'll just keep it at zero for the sake of being consistent. And then, so in particle mode, just use the cut tool to cut off the bottom, um, if it works. B, 
bit finicky this tool. Sometimes it works really well, sometimes it doesn't. Zooming seems to help. Yeah, don't ask me why. I'm not a programmer. Um, but you can sort of cut it quite neatly at the bottom, so there's a bit of, you know, that's the bit that sticks into the bird. And then if we go to the side view, you'll see. I'll cut that bit off the back there. Um, but you'll see that it's a three dimensional feather, and we only need a two dimensional feather. So, in the side view, so that's the front and that's the back now. I'll just carefully cut sort of all this sort of extra stuff off. If you zoom in, you can get a bit closer. Um, and it doesn't matter too much if you sort of have some little bits of leftovers on there. Um, as you can see, I royally screwed that one up, so I'll do it again. Um, yeah, make sure you don't cut into the entire, or the sorry, the rest of the actual bit of feather that you want. Um, yeah, little bits like that is okay because it's sort of you sort of get that on feathers. There's little bits, little tufts on there. Um, so don't worry about being perfect because nothing in nature is perfect. And trying to replicate the imperfections in everything is actually one of the most difficult things to do. Um, but it can sort of being a little bit lazy can sort of um, help especially in this instance, just because we're not cutting everything down, sort of all the way down to the bone. Um, or, I don't know what you call that. Is it a filament or something? I don't know. That's probably the horribly wrong word. I'm sure there's some bird enthusiasts watching this video right now going, oh, it's a... this thing. Um, but yeah. So... Cut all that sort of extra stuff off the front and back. Looks like a business few bits there, but that's not too much to worry about. Um, and then we'll just go to comb and the radius up and the strength down. So we've got some big sort of strokes going on. Like that. And that's what I want to see happen. Is just bringing this top up and just sort of bringing the rest of it up a bit as well. And then if we zoom in a bit and just sort of focus on this part. Um, if you're clever like I was just then, you can get it to be quite nicely spread out. But not everyone's as clever as me. Sort of like the past me just then. <laughs> um, you can try and get it sort of spread out. The more time you spend on it, the more, time, the more difficult it's actually going to be. Um, so if, if you can sort of get it right in the first few strokes you'll be cheering um, but it's not always going to work perfectly but again you don't need to be perfect you don't want it to be perfectly symmetrical typically um, unless you're making the perfectly symmetrical bird from Mars which doesn't exist but if it did all its feathers would be perfectly symmetrical. Um, yeah, that's sort of a fun little shape. Don't know if you can define that as even close to any actual bird, but that's the fun part of any your own things. Um, I found X Mirror doesn't really work very well for me. It could be different for other people, but that's just my experience. So, I've got a feathery looking shape. I'll just turn on B spline and steps 4 is usually alright. Just turn it up to 4 on the display. Yeah, that looks pretty good, pretty smooth. It's about how you want it to look. I mean, having these big, sort of chunky gaps is quite a good thing to have. Uh, so, we're going to add in some children here. Just simple. And so that's how many, this value here is how many you actually see in the display, so right now. And that's how many you get, like extra particles you get per particle um, you get on rendering. And 
a hundred is too many. Um, so keeping it about ten is quite good. Um, you can add in a bit of randomization. Doesn't do a lot, um, but you can play with the settings a bit. I mean, there's all this sort of clumping and stuff. Um, but default settings are fine for this. So we got that. Um, and pretty much we just want to render now. So grab the camera, Alt R and Alt G, and that just places it at the center of the world. So I'll bring it back a bit. Um, and then R and hold down Control to constrain the rotation. So you can rotate it exactly 90 degrees, or you can hit R90. Negative 90, depending on what way around it's going to go. Um, and I'll just sort out the light, make it a hemi, and I'll R and LG again. And I'll make it 0.5 energy, because otherwise it would be way too strong. And again, just holding down control after hitting R, um, I'll bring it just straight back. And that should be fine. For render resolution, Set it to 100%, and set both X and Y to be 1024 by 1024. Because we're going to use this render as a texture, um, and you know we want to basically every text we use needs to be a square number. Um, and 1024 by 1024 is just fine. You can make it high resolution if you really need it to be, but. I mean, you're going to have a lot of feathers in the scene, so you could probably get away with 512 by 512 or 256 by 256 if you need to save time when it comes to rendering, because um, it will have to render, you know, a whole bird's worth, depending on what you're doing. You might just want a few feathers in your scene, oh, but this would be cool. Um, so, that should be set up. I'll just hit F12 to render. And one last thing is, you'll notice all these, I mean you'll notice it especially here, I don't know why I'm getting that line down the middle, I haven't gotten that before, it kind of looks alright. Um, so it's separated from the thing there, quickly see if I can fix that. because I put beast blind on, okay. So, beast blind makes it weird, but I believe it's quicker to render, so, a little quicker to calculate in some way. It's just my knowledge. I don't have a huge amount of knowledge of particles um, and the way it works, but, so I won't turn that on. Um, it looks fine like that. But the actual thickness of each individual strand is too thick. Um, so in the strand settings um, for the material, just turn all of this down, and that makes it look nice and thin. Um, that's about perfect. I might turn the children up to 15 and render that, just so it's a little bit thicker, um, and you can see where. You know, this is where I just put a few strokes in, but you can see where I tried to put too many strokes in and it just kind of ruined it at the top. Um, but, you know, it looks a little bit ruffled, as feathers can be. So we got that. I will save the image as. I've got feathertexture.tga. I'll make it feathertexture2. That was just from a previous try um, when I was just trying to figure it all out. Go Targa and we'll go RGBA and so for the texture 2 save as image. So we're definitely using this one and I will just move this feather object to a different layer and bring in a plane. Rotate it on the Z. Nope. Rotate it on the X by 90. And we will, so in the material settings, make sure you scroll all the way up, because I was at the bottom of the window there. Um, add in a new material for the plane. 
and then add in a new texture for the plane and this is where we get the image that we just rendered out and we open the image here go to feather texture 2 open image and in here turn on pre-multiply you can see that preview looks a lot nicer um, and I'll just make this a bit bigger so you can see what all these values are because I've got names we want to turn on the alpha value so the um, alpha value from the texture will give us transparency and we want to use UV coordinates but we haven't set any yet it's entirely possible that the default coordinates should be fine I'm just go to further texture 2 and hit U unwrap in edit mode with everything selected and that just sort of helps it to be consistent um, whenever you're sort of if you ever loading and reloading generated you know it's just sort of whatever it decides it's going to be um, it might work but I know it's going to work if it's got the UV coordinates like set up like that um, and in the material settings turn off specular intensity don't want any on there because it messes with the background uh, transparency we want on and set alpha to zero um, and you can add some color here you can even add um, some color textures in here just sort of overlay them on there give it some extra color and if I hit F12 you can see a, a upside down transparent feather um, so I'll rotate that in the Y by 180 so now it's facing up and set the background color just to a blue just to prove that it is transparent and you can see the blue coming through all the transparent parts um, and that's the texture that's pretty much everything um, and when it comes to using it I'm just going to shift D a few times create a few duplicates so we've got a few feathers behind um, you don't have to have it too far behind like that's obviously way too far for just um, five or six feathers so just a little bit of space between the feathers helps give it depth um, so it depends on how you're arranging your feathers but yeah try to give them some depth it sort of helps everything figure out the order to render it um, and as you can see this feather is quite clearly over the top of this one whereas it's behind it this feather is behind this one here um, these middle bits are sticking out quite a bit they look a bit garish but that can be fixed um, but yeah that's pretty much the entire feather technique um, let me know if you've got any questions on anything I've shown you here um, any requests for video tutorials more than happy to take them um, in fact at this point I'm probably more likely to do requests than anything um, assuming they're you know, reasonable enough um, just because I am working full time and coming up with ideas for tutorials is difficult um, when you've got to research them and try and figure out if it's going to work blah 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 but if I know what you want then I can sort of I've got uh, something to aim for um, but yeah that's the further tutorial I uh, hope you learned leave comments and stuff um, and I will see you next time